Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing, where today I'm at Old Berry Hill Lake in Dorking. I'm going to be talking with Russ Evans, who's in the tackle shop there, he's a matchman, and he's an expert in catching all sorts of different freshwater fish over, over here, you know, in these uh, different lakes that's available. But, I'm going to be using quiver tips, which we haven't used before, I'm going to be using swim feeders to build the feed up in the swim, and most important, Russ is going to give us all his top tips and secrets. He will, I know he will. Come on, let's get going. Okay, uh, that's what I want to do. I want to go quiver tipping, maybe some bream. Yeah. But I want you to run me through because I know there's a lot of different types of feeders in there. You know, I mean, there's sort of block ends and cage feeders. And if you could just run us past and just tell us the sort of, you know, the type of ground bait you put in and what they're used for. Because I know a lot of youngsters, it's just a, a mishmash of feeders. They, yeah, they might not right. use the right one for the right job. Yeah, there's so so many feeders about. So many, like you say, shapes and sizes for different eventualities but as you can see we've got the the maggot feeders which are very good some of them are loaded all different shapes and sizes they come in so if you're fishing you know like for the say the bream and, and roach and they're uh, ideal for putting the maggots in that sort of stuff so you've got them then there can you change your weights on those as well or, or is that a um, fixed weight some of them you can the, these do clip off some of them screw off so you can put say like if you're also it starts towing a bit more even sure. if you're on say rivers and stuff um, and you can put a, a, a different weight on or some of them you can get like little clips that clip on as well to sure. make them a bit heavier to hold the bottom or you can do the opposite and take them off sometimes uh, floating feeders also works quite well as well especially if the fish yeah. come up in the water now you wouldn't put ground bait in those would you because they clog wouldn't they with that cap yeah again? yeah definitely it'll all be just sort of the the lids come off there, so it'll be like sort of maggots, pinkies, that sort of thing. And they, they just wiggle their way out? Yeah, they've got all, all holes through them all, so they just quickly, quickly come out. And, uh, and then obviously scatter around you, your hook Yeah, yeah. Uh, on your open end, do you call these feeders, or are they all open end? You know, what they're all, yeah, they're all open end. These are the grip mesh feeders. As you can see inside, there's like little spikes in there. So if you want to use these with sort of pallets, softened down pallets. Oh, I see, yes. The, 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 the idea of the spikes is that when you sort of pack it in, it grips hold of it. Stops it flying out, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. also people use these if they're sort of dead baiting in the winter and they want to put some chopped up bits of mackerel in there as well. Oh, is that right? That, that kind of goes in there and, and again, because they're cool, that's why they're called grip meshes, these ones, and they literally do grip grip the bait. So, uh, so mostly for pellets, really, mostly for softened so, pellets? Yes, yeah, softened pellet is absolutely ideal. And, or any sort of particle baits as well. Sure. And then you've got the cage feeder, um, what, which is a wire mesh. I use these quite a lot myself, very effective. And again, because they're quite heavy, even the small ones, you can cast these quite a long distance sure, yeah, with balance yeah. line and, and tackle on there. Now, why the plastic one as opposed to the cage? Well, I think the plastic ones, a lot of it is down to personal preference as well. Sure. Um, but they will sink, sink, bot, sink quicker to the bottom with these. If they, if you're fishing um, quite weedy, although the old lake here is very silty, um, rather than if you're fishing in snaggy and then you retrieve your feeder, rather than like a cage feeder would sort of travel yeah, and come up slowly, yes. with a, a plastic sort of feeder it will come up quicker, oh, okay. so if you've got yeah. snags or rocks or some places do, and also soon if, as that sort of if, it's, if it's a bit weedy or muddy I can see that now, this one's going to bury, so if you just twitch it, because occasionally you can get a bite by twitching the feeder, yep, can, that, that one's more likely to bury, whereas a plastic one's more likely to come up in the water a little yeah, bit. sit on top, yeah, and also like so they retrieve up quicker as well. So how would you stop those from sliding down on the hook? What's the general method of doing that? Right? Well, I mean, what, what I tend to use now, I'll, have, I'll, put, I'll put a link swivel on, so it's more free running yeah. as well, because a, a lot of fisheries now uh, are moving away from fixed leads, so it, it slides up and down. And, and the best way, what I tend to use, is a lot of these sort of quick change beads that you can get now, where that, that, that will pop off, and then your, your, your main line will go through the middle, that then ties onto, let me just pop that off if I can. And this is instead of a split shot, which A is going to weaken the line when you squeeze it on, and B might slide on the cast. Exactly, yeah, split shots tend to move up and down, and like you say, they will damage the line. But with these, you've, you know, it sort of pulls apart. It's like a little plug, I see yeah, it's like a little plug. Yeah, it's like a little plug, a little plug there, your, your main line goes through there, that travels up the line like so, yeah. and then you do like a five turn water knot, yes. wet, wet the line, so that, that will then be connected to and obviously your feeder is going up and down in between that sure. as well. And then that, that comes down and it also acts as a, 
is a little hook on there, so you hook to nylon, whatever you want to fish yeah, with. A bit of link on or something. Yeah, a little link clips on there. That then pushes on tight, and it acts as a stopper for your feed is sliding all the way down to your hook, exactly. which you don't want, and also it connects your hook length as well, and again if you want to change your hook length, you just unplug it again, swap it down, you may want to go up the size or a completely different set, different yeah. hook length set up, bump and away you go. Right, that's good, that's really good. Handy, handy little tips. There. So for here really, I need, if I'm going to have a go, maybe try and pick up a bream or so, forget these block ends and go uh, well, even forget the ones that, that take the pellets with the grips in one or one, yep. just, just like a plastic one, you think, really? Yeah, if you like, like sort that. of a medium size, that sort of even a medium size cage feeder okay. as, as well. We'll give, you know. we'll give it a go anyway, yep. right? so uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we catch something. I want to try and use uh, just natural base like worms and maggots. Yep, okay. And you've got all that here, and you do all the tackling. Yeah, and also all the bait, corn. everything. Corn's a good one as well, you know, here with a piece of corn, I do a lot of the old corn, okay. very visual bait as well. So Well, I'm all, fired, I'm all fired up to go now, so I better get down there. And you sent me down the end by one of the pigs, your favourite, so you can't let me down, can you? Oh, no, no, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll do well down there. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers, Graham. Okay, guys, before we go anywhere, let me show you my own tackle setup for swim feeder and quiver tipping for whatever, possibly bream here at, uh, at the lake. This is how I do it. Okay then, for those of you who don't know what a quiver tip is, I'm using an Avon rod. It's got an ordinary Avon section. It's also got a quiver tip section, which is an entire top section which goes onto the rod. A quiver tip is, it's gonna be tough to work this out, a tip and very sensitive, so it quivers. So it indicates bites like this, this is how it works. Very, very fine. Now it can be one piece like this, or it can actually be, say, about a two foot section that's spliced into the rod, or it can be a spigot on the end where you slot different weights of quiver tip on, because they're all graded in different pools, you know, how much it takes to move that, that quiver, that tip to indicate a bite. Lots of different sizes and settings. Me, you know me, Mr. Simple, I keep it basic. Probably had this rod 25 years one quiver tip, I haven't got a clue what the pound test on it is, but it quivers and it gets me bites. But this is how I do my setup because I'm gonna be fishing with two rods. Okay, now my basic setup is this. I don't have one of those fancy stands yet. I'm gonna buy them. I just use independent rod rest so I can set up exactly how I want for quiver tipping. Now, what I do is I just use a couple of butt rests spaced so the reels don't clash, but I want them to fit almost level here as you can see with a graded ridged quiver tip rest float fishing rest call it what you will but it's got these little slots in it so when your rod rests in there the line actually doesn't pinch you also got these on the outside as well so i'm going to space these on here with my rods so they're absolutely equidistant here and here at the back at the butt i'll show you how i do it Okay, I've got my two butt rests at the back. I've got my front rest there. I'm just gonna set these rods up so you can get some idea of how I'm gonna fit them up. You can see on the notches there, you've got different grades of notches. So as I set the two rods up, I can actually put them on there, have them very slightly tapered. I can't obviously put them too far across here because they're gonna to be touching. And I don't want them so far apart on the outside of those rests because my eye's got to go from this one to this one, this one to this one. I want them within a range that I can I can see both bites at the same time. If I get both bites, I should say one or the other. But I set them up like this, but then what I do is I space one a little bit further out like this, put the reels further out, and that way I can fish two rods. So if you can imagine I'm casting out here, I want to fish one swim, let's say three, four feet wide. I want to fish one rod to the right, I want to fish one rod to the left. I don't want them tangling, but ordinarily, if I struck on one, it will tangle. So I want to fish, instead of having the two quiver tips like this, I want to have them like that, what I call asymmetric. So this will be the outside left one, this will be the inside right. When I strike on this one, I get the bite here. I strike, I don't tangle this one. And when I strike on the inside one, I strike over the top, it doesn't tangle that. I fish, I'm greedy, I fish two rods at once, it's unbelievable. Now there may be some of you that think, my goodness, that lake he's fishing is quite small. I'm actually, for the benefit of filming and a controlled situation, doing this in one of my garden ponds, so it's much easier. So I'm gonna put the rods down. Let me just slacken this one off and I'll show you. There, I'm gonna have one 
fishing there on the inside and I'm going to have one just fishing there on the outside. So if I tension up those, I'm just going to dump the swim feeders in the pond to put a bit of tension on them. I'll show you how to tighten up with the reel and the spool. Okay, so let's just say I've cast out. I'm fishing the swim over to the right. The swim feeder will generally just go slack. You need to tighten up on that and you're going to be tensioning with the reel or you can turn the spool either way just to put a bit of tension in that tip. Now what I like to do is I'll give it as it hits the bottom, you can generally see the tip spring straight. Tighten up to the feeder, a bit of tension, and give it about one good turn and bump that feeder along the bottom. So it, it just straightens everything out from the hook link to the feeder, and the same on the other one. And then I adjust the tension, extra attention that I want to get that tip absolutely perfect by using the spool, just rotating the spool to either tighten or slacken off the tension. Okay, so you've made your cast out there. Your feeders are settling down, invariably go slack. So starting with the left hand one first, what you've got to do is just tighten up to that feeder. Two, a couple of one, two or three turns, just to bump the feeder along the bottom with the reel handle, turn the reel handle a few times, bump it, straighten that hook link out, and then just relax it. And with the same with the other one, obviously I'm doing the two together here over my uh, pond. Cast out, let it settle, a couple of turns, with the reel handle, bump it back to you, straighten the hook link out to the bait, relax it. Now, on the left hand one, use the reel spool just to tighten up gently and get that exactly where you want it. You can use the reel handle if you want, but sometimes the handle's too heavy. Same with the other one. Just ease into it like this and you'll find a better adjustment. You can either tension them up or you can relax them by making the final adjustments using the spool. Just twist the spool in the front of the reel, okay? So you're set. You do not want them both cranked around like this under pressure. You don't want them both straight like that. You want them just under enough tension on the line, just barely maintaining a little bit of indication. And when you get the bite, let's say on the left hand one, it's gonna be bang, 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 pull. That's where you strike. Do not strike at lion bites. Lion bites are when the fish swims through your line, catches it with his fin, he'll pull it down, it will just twang back like that. It will just pull down, bang it falls off his fin. Don't strike at those, they're just what's called lion bites. You strike at ones that are, as your indication, let it progress and as it pulls around like that, that's when you strike. Okay, here we go for making up the totally awesome feeder fishing mix. This is what I do anyway, I'm not going to go and spend a fortune on ground bait. Yeah, bread. Okay, soak the bread like this in a bucket of water. There we go. And then you'll find, with that water in it, put a bit more on there, you can squash it all up. Mash it all up like this. You do it on, say, probably half a loaf of bread, depending on whether you're going to catapult it out or you're just going to use feeders all the time. Mush that all up. You can see, lovely, lovely, squishy. I love bread. Okay, then I'm going to add to that some bran. About the same mix, I'm only making a real small mix. This bran sort of helps it bind together a bit, but also adds up, breaks up particles, so it feeds off small fish, a tiny little one inch, two inch fry. Now, what you don't want is a really stiff mix. You want it to come out of the feeder. If you're winding that feeder back in on a retrieve and you've still got it full of ground bait and, and maggots and stuff like that, you definitely have got it made too stiff. I'll put a bit more water with that. Okay, and then in goes, oh, I love that price. How long is it gonna stay like that? Pound, then we go. Sweet corn, a little bit of sweet corn in there. And of course, you know, put some maggots in as well. I'm not gonna put many in because I'm only making a bit of a mix here. Mix it all up like this. You wanna sort of a nice fluffy mix like this. My dog's gonna love clearing up after all this. Now you can see that breaks up. I squeeze it into a ball, but uh, it crumbles off. They got they can they can get maggots out of there. They can take pieces of sweet corn. They can even take pieces of bread. So there we go. And now this is important. These are the two feeders I'm going to be trying with and starting off. But that basically is the feeder mix. Okay, I've got my maggots. Now just to show you, I'm going to put some maggots into a block-in feeder like this just to give you an idea i've only got the cap i haven't got a hook or anything i just to show you and there you will see them hopefully 
they wiggle out from the feeder and they get into your swim really quickly. If you pack that tight with maggots, they take longer to come out. But as you can see, I just packed a few in there, but look how, how fast they're coming out. So I'll be looking at about a five minute retrieve there. Plus I'm putting a lot of maggots into the water in one go. So that's a block end if you want to introduce maggots to the swim. Now here's my variation of the rig Ross was showing. I've got a number 10 barrel swivel here. I've slide the feeder up on a link, a little short link about maybe one inch here. To a so that's running up and down the line. That's going up and down the line like this. I've got a rubber valve stop here so when I cast that compresses and doesn't pinch on the the line doesn't wear on that knot there. So a little, well, I suppose you call it a little bit of safety there. About 10 inches to the hook. But of course it's barbless. So what do you do with the maggots or the worms? If you put live bait on there, just going to wriggle off and you're sitting there with a bare hook. So what do I do, if I can show you here, the first maggot, I pop over the eye of the hook, roll it round, get your nail, don't matter if you burst it, which you are going to do, pop it over the hook, then there's always something left on there. Pile on, let's say, two or three maggots, and see another one out there. It's a bit of colour. Now these loose ones can wriggle off, so what I do, I put a little stopper on there in the shape of a piece of sweet corn. Clever, isn't it? And that just locks those maggots on there. Now should this piece of sweet corn off come off, should those come off as well, I'm still left with a bit of bait there. And then all you do is fill your feeder up. Now you can pack that into the bottom, just like that, just, just a piece in the bottom. Then you can fill that with maggots, loose maggots, and then you can cap it off with a plug at the top. So there you go, you've actually got, you've got their ground bait, maggots ground bait. And now when this sinks on the ground, casting wise, it hits the ground, the hook bait will go on top of it. Why I do that reel handle, a little bit of straightening there is because I want to drag all this out straight, pull the feeder away, and I want that just like this. I want to. If it falls like this, I want to pull the feeder away, keep this one straight. So if a fish takes this, I get an immediate indication on the rod top. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm not going to catch very much in my ornamental pond, am I? So you've seen my setup on quiver tips, and you've seen how to fill the feeder. You've seen my basic approach. Tell you what, let's get back to that lake and see if I can actually put into practice what I'm preaching. As we say here at Totally Awesome, fingers crossed. Is that a bite in my pond? Okay guys, at long last, after about three hours, I've got one on the feeder. I've no idea what it is, but I guess it's a bream. It's been a mare today. Absolute mare, the wind's only just gone down. I've lost one other bream, and that's been it. It's been a tough one, despite Russ's good tips. But well, fingers crossed we get this one in. Yeah, it's a bream. It's a bream. <laughs> it wasn't the fish that was totally toast, it was nearly yours truly that was totally toast. My goodness, three hours for one bite. Well, two bites actually. And there is quite a respectable bream. So there you go, it shows you the feeder works. Just, <laughs> only just. Now I'm sure the fish are out there and it's just been so windy. Now it's gone down, I think I might get another one. Nice fish though. An old Berry Hill Lake bream taken on the feeder. And I haven't seen one fish caught today. But hang on, buddy, we'll get you back. There you go. Away you go. Hi, right, guys. Five minute warning. Fish number two. I was going to pack up. I thought I'll give it till five o'clock and I'll go because it's so dead. I had that fish. And now, unfortunately, for my wife and family, I feel very sorry. 
because I've now had another fish within five minutes and I'm not going home yet. That's if it stays on. There we go. Number two bites of dust. And I've got a feeling there might be some more on the way. That wind's gone down now. It's blowing about full five before straight in my face. It's slicked off and I think they found that feed. And that's what it is about swim feeding. It's, it's baiting up that swim for you and letting the fish move in. Let's get the guy back. A lot of consistent fishing is not having the most expensive tackle and it's not about taking the most expensive bait in the shop. Good fishing is about the technique itself and I always try to pass on the very basic tips that help catch you the fish. Now, while my setup might look pretty basic, it's worked for me for over 40 years. And don't forget, if you can master the use of two quivered rods, you can double your chance of a bite. Ah, there we go guys, this is what's called a skimmer. This is a small bream. So, ah, oh, calm down. So that one's called a skimmer bream. Because one assumes they're small enough on heavy tackle to be skimmed across the surface. I really don't know, I guess that's why they're called skimmers. But when these guys move in, you can get through a lot of bait. So be prepared to put some more into the feeder and keep it going out on a more regular basis. And eventually the bigger bream will push these guys out of the way. There we go. Let's get him back and get another one. And once the fish move in, you should catch them consistently. But remember, a shoal of bream and skimmers can soon plough their way through the food. Keep that feeder filled and going back out there every five or ten minutes. The old fishing saying is, if you look after the fish with plenty of food, they will look after you. Guys, it's gone up the tree with the rod. I think we're going to have to hand line the fish in. It's a totally awesome way of fishing. I actually got my line, the rod top went through the top of the branch and out the other side and our hand line, you can't say we don't use different methods, actually I think that's the first time I've ever hand lined a bream and landed it. But there you go here, at totally awesome fishing, we don't give up. And this one is another one that is totally toast. Of course you can't afford to take your eyes off a quiver tip rod just to watch the local wildlife. There are no wake up buzzer alarms with this method. The minute you look away, yep, that's when you get the best bite of the day. So keep a light tension on those quiver tips and sit back and relax. You're supposed to enjoy it. Don't they say fishing's supposed to be relaxing? Well, it might be for some. But for me, it's a totally nerve-wracking exercise. I'm always glad to go home and have a rest. But swim feeders and bream, they really do go well together. There we go guys, how about that to finish off with? A proper bream, a totally awesome bream on the feeder four red maggots tipped off with a piece of sweet corn to stop the maggots coming off and 
think it really is time to get home. What's that? Three, four bream, about eight skimmers now. I should have been home hours ago. It's terrible. Beautiful.